Hi, Chrissy again. I'm continuing the time management brief in part two. I've talked about the Eisenhower theory of time management in part one, and you'll probably want to watch that first, just so you have an idea of what we're talking about. Um, we've already filled out our quadrants here with important, urgent um, ideas. So as you can probably guess, we need to tackle quadrant one first, the important and urgent items. The nice thing about tackling this quadrant first is that after we have completed these tasks, we're more likely to complete tasks in the other areas um, that we want to tackle. All right, so important and urgent is probably where we want to complete first. The next one that I want to move on to is the urgent area, but not important. Okay, so this is something that we could look at tasks in this area and then delegate if we have too much on our plate. So any officers in charge, anyone that is, is a department head, um, anyone that's in charge of any particular division, this is places where you probably need to look at delegating more. Um, I can just give you a personal example. I'm a parent in addition to being a, a full-time uh, fleet and family trainer. Um, so I know that within our house, I need to probably clean my kitchen floor. It's important, but it's not as important as other tasks. It's urgent though, it's time sensitive. If I don't clean my floor, I might um, have mold that develops, I might attract rodents or, or um, bugs. Um, so that's actually something that I can delegate within my house to an older child who is capable of cleaning the floor or has um, another want that they, something they may want for me, either monetarily or food-wise. Um, so this is something I can delegate. There's still important phone calls and emails, but maybe we can just push those over to someone else in a different um, that we are in charge of to complete those tasks. This area down here is not an area that we can delegate, right? Um, but this is an area that we should schedule and focus. So for example, if I'm in a relationship with someone, I might regularly need to schedule time that we are planning to have date night or that we have dinner regularly together or that we plan to go away once a year. Um, that's not something I want to delegate to anyone and it is not urgent, it's not pressing, but it's something that I need to continually be doing. We can also put, um, maybe other tasks like home improvement or exercise or um, some professional development, we can put that in this quadrant as well. So we wanna focus on it, we wanna take time in our day daily to acknowledge it, and we, but we wanna regularly schedule that. So people who regularly plan to read a certain amount of books within a year, they regularly work out, they regularly plan time to spend time with people who they enjoy, this is important. Okay, so that's another thing. Schedule, do first, delegate if possible. This area around here is something that you want to maybe avoid, but there's another way that you can use this area as well. So sometimes like if we don't understand how to complete one of these quadrants, we might move to this quadrant for a second um, to get a break. So for example, I might not be very interested in completing an Excel document to send up to my officer in charge, but I'm going to dedicate a certain amount of time for it. And then after I complete it, or after I've worked on it for a period of time that has been predetermined, I might reward myself with a phone call to someone that I've been missing, or some of those time wasters like social media, or internet shopping or some of the other fun things we might want to do. All right, this is the second section. I'll see you for three session of time management.